let's get let's get into it coach calling news we got Stephen a smith sitting down with patrick bet david Stephen a smith has been making waves in the things that he was saying recently he called out biden he was talking about certain things that biden did to portray himself as uh pro-black sitting down with a black family eating fried chicken which is just wild when you say it out loud the way i just did that's what he was doing though Stephen A. Smith calls it out. Now, in the Patrick Bet David podcast, we got a little bit of a different vibe from Stephen A. Smith. Now, the conversation that they're having is about Trump and having Trump in office and if he's the right person to have in office. And Stephen A. Smith is trying to make a case of why he thinks he's not. But I've made a video about this that's on my main channel. And uh, the thumbnail says, In Defense of Trump. And I don't think Stephen A. Smith understands this. Patrick Bed David makes a great argument to, what's he, to, to what Stephen A. Smith is saying. Stephen A. Smith saying that the fact that he acts a certain way, he's not presidential enough. Patrick brings up a great story. And then, for the first time ever, I agree with Adam of the podcast. If you watch the Patrick Bed David podcast, you know that when Adam's on, you skip the episode or at least skip the parts where he's talking. <laughs> But this time, I heard him out, and he made a lot of sense. And what he said, what he's applying to Stephen A. Smith, I would apply, I would say to anybody who has this issue in regards to somebody not being presidential enough, and that is results. Let's start with this first clip, then we're going to get into it more. I view the presidency, I understand it's the commander-in-chief, I get it, but I view, and, and listen, I will preface it by saying I'm open to correction. I truly am. I view the presidency as more of a statesmanship position. I would, if, if I interviewed Trump, I would look him in his face and tell him why. I would never, I'm not calling you a racist. I'm not saying that all of your policies were wrong. Hell, the economy was thriving before COVID. I remember, but you don't know how to act. You just, I said, you don't care what you say. You don't care about how divisive you come across. You don't have any sensitivity whatsoever to how you scare the living hell out of people with your rhetoric and with your, your aloof. I don't know if the word is aloofness or just a disregard for the importance of unity. I believe you believe in America. I believe in America. Let me tell you what I believe in about America. I believe that when we're together, nothing can stop us. Nothing. I don't care if it's a bad president. I don't care if it's bad people on Capitol Hill. I don't care if corporate America is garbage. I don't care if Wall Street's messing up. We will overcome anything when we're together. And I remember how I felt this way. And this is the only time I'm 56 years old. So now he gets into a story about 9-11, but I'm just touching on the things that he's saying in regards to Trump not being presidential enough. He doesn't know how to act, as he just said. The thing about it is, and what we're going to get into next is Patrick's co-host, Vinny, is going to be asking him, if you had all the things that you had gone through, the same things that Trump has gone through in the the pursuit of becoming president and while he was president and afterwards, how would you feel? That's the question that Vinny's going to be posing. But to say that Trump doesn't know how to act is complete. It's just, it's so crazy. Again, I go back to Killer Mike. What Killer Mike said, he's a rapper. He's also an activist in his community. And he always says, he speaks to mainly black people, but what he says can apply to all people. He says, go and look at the policies. Forget about what they're saying or what they're trying to demonize. Go and look at the policies. Go and look at if what they're doing is going to be beneficial to your community, beneficial to society. That's what you should be looking at. The fact that people... With this stature that Stephen A. has, keep on bringing up this not being presidential enough, but then also being able to say the economy was thriving. It's like, hey, man, that's what you're supposed to focus on because you don't even you don't even have to listen to what he has to say. You don't have to listen to all of that. And most of the time when people are talking about him not knowing how to act. They're getting sound bites from the mainstream media. They're getting little clips here and there, or they're just getting straight up smear pieces that they're putting on the, the regular suspects of mainstream news. 
So for him to say that he's not presidential enough, that he doesn't know how to act, how are you supposed to act? Because as far as I can see, politicians for decades have aspired to be the guy that a regular person could drink a beer with. Is that presidential? Is it? <laughs> it's not. So for decades, they've been aspiring to, be pre to not be presidential and to be the everyday man, to be a regular guy. And all of a sudden we get a guy who is like a regular guy, you know, and of course he's a billionaire, you know, big money for a long time, supermodels, all sorts of wild things. So you can't say he's regular, but he comes across very, the way he speaks about things, the terms he uses, he doesn't put himself, when he talks in a rally, he does not put himself above people. He sounds like a guy in New York who just walked up to you and is pretty much just talking to you about what he's going to do. And he's just breaking it down and it's a little funny and it's a little humorous and it's straightforward and it's raw, but that's what you want in a person. So I just don't buy that argument that he's not presidential enough. Now, Vinny's going to pose his question. Stephen A is going to answer. Then we're going to get back to it. Let's go. Going back, if you don't mind, Patrick, I'm going to the fact that... that Trump's divisiveness. Let me ask you, Stephen. Sure. You're going for president. Mm -hmm. You're going to go run for president. As you come in, you don't even think you're going to win. You find out, Stephen, that the president before you was spying on you and your campaign. Think about this. Think about this. Spying on your campaign. Then the chick that you're running against paid all these millions to have this fake Russian thing. So, by the way, your anger's building. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Then the two impeachments. Then this 2020 FBI's at Twitter blocking all the stories from Hunter and everything. How was your, you, Stephen A. Smith, how is your attitude going to be? Are you going to be like my, this guy? My attitude is going to be probably stink. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be furious. I'm going to be all of those things. Yes. But I also know what I signed up for. And I signed up to be a president to all the people, not to come across as somebody who's only loyal to my constituency who put me in that office. Because you do have that with some politicians. Mm -hmm. They think about who got them there. And I understand when you're campaigning. Please don't get me wrong. Of I'm trying to get in the office, trying to maintain power. I get yep. that part. Yep. But what I'm saying is once you're there, mm -hmm. you got an obligation to be bigger than that. And when you find yourself, I remember I saw Cat Williams, the comedian, joking about this when he was doing a, a concert in Jacksonville. And he was like, Trump, Trump is coming. You know, he ain't playing games. And who did he go out? Kathy Griffin. You know, he's talking about Kathy. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, Kathy Griffin. Yeah. You know, and I was like, you just find yourself. It's like. There, there comes a point in time where you elevate to a certain level in life where the pettiness has to go out the window because you, you got to remember, it's not just about what you do. It's about what you're convincing the American citizen you're doing. You can't scare the living hell out of people because that causes chaos, too. And what it does is it, can, it, it distracts us from the very good that you might be doing. Because we're caught up in all the noise you've created. And then, listen, I firmly believe, and I've said this publicly, they say 81 million plus people voted for Joe Biden. I don't believe that for one second. <laughs> I believe 81 plus million people voted against Donald Trump. They didn't want him there. They couldn't take it anymore because he was so unsettling. And that's the difference. Unsettling. Unsettling. Because, you know, I mean, I mean, everybody was saying, you know, he's going to get us into wars and right. World War Three started. Right. Oh, no, no. World War Steve. No war started, actually. So it's just and, the, and his own words, the economy was thriving. <laughs> but also at the same time, this gentleman's un unsettling. Now he's talking about something. And I just touched on this before. He said all the noise that you've created. He's not the one creating noise. He's doing what every president does. You sit down, you talk with people, you hold press conferences, you speak to these people, you speak to that people, you speak on this event, that event. He's not stirring up noise. He's doing what every president does. You speak to the press, you speak to the public. Who creates the noise? It's mainstream media that creates the noise. And they decide whether you're going to be listening to classical music or you're going to be listening to death metal. It is, it's not him. He's just talking straight up. 
He's talking straight up and very clear. They're the ones that decide what tunes you're about to hear and how much of the volume is going to be playing in your ear. And if it's going to be this close to your face or if it's going to be a field away, they're the ones that decide, not him. So he's not the one drumming up the noise. And here's the thing. Let's touch on what else he's talking about. You know, you go through all that stuff. You're supposed to rise above it. You're supposed to rise above all of that. You're supposed to walk in and say, well, there have been things done to me, as all of you know. Let's not get into it. Let's just speak about this as men do, yes? Now, we will take care of the border. Never need to know why. We have some unwanted coming. No! If he started speaking like that and he puts himself above everybody, everybody's going to be like, what the hell is this? But here's another thing that happens if he decides to put himself above everything that Vinny mentioned. Here's what happens. We don't wake up to the fact that the fake news exists. We don't wake up to what mainstream media is doing at all. We don't wake up to the fact that there's a military industrial complex because he was one of the first presidents to say, ah, they want to go to war. They want war. He met, he literally said there's a military industrial complex. They want war. You'll see in a few years, people will talk about it. He said that out loud. We don't get that either. <sighs> we don't figure out that there are agencies that are working against him. We agencies that are just supposed to be working in the American people's interests. We don't figure out that they're actually working as they see fit and against him because of the things he's saying. We don't get that either. <laughs> we don't figure out that there is a swamp of politicians and that they're doing very backhanded things. We always speculate. We always, everybody was like, nah, you don't trust them. But then when you had a president who's actually talking about it, that hits different. I talk about it all the time on my main channel. A lot of the times when Rogan talks about certain things, it hits different because he's on the biggest media platform in the world. When Trump takes the highest office and then he speaks about these things, it hits completely different. Everything that he did in terms of calling things out and not being above it, not being statesmanly, gave us all a window into how things actually work. And if he just decided to put himself above all that and not mention any of it because he's being the bigger person, we would have all been left in the dark. If he had not been the way he was, we never would have got Chuck Schumer going on Rachel Maddow's show and saying that the, 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 the certain agencies have are able to screw you six ways from Sunday and they're very unhappy with him and he shouldn't be playing around with them. We don't get that quote either. There's many things that you don't get if Trump wasn't the way that he was. And it's it's crazy that Stephen A. Smith can't see that. Now, Patrick Bed David is going to bring up a little story. I'm pretty sure this is the proper clip. He's going to bring up a little story just talking about, you know, the person that you want that brings results isn't always the person that's going to be the most clean cut gentleman. Let's get into it. Um, I, I, I read this story, this book called by Donald T. Phillips, Lincoln on Leadership. And I don't know what chapter it is, 11 or 13, you know, he says, search until you find your grant. Okay, search until you find your grant. And he has all these guys that are his generals, Lincoln does, McClellan, keeps wanting to train his people. Very proper, very nice, you know, respectful, everything. But he just, are we going to war yet? North? No, 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 we're just training, we're still preparing. Are we going to war yet? No, no, we're just, are we there? No, man, I'm firing this guy, bring another guy, and bring another guy, and bring, and th in this chapter called Search Until You Find Your Grant, if you do anything, buy this book and just read that chapter, whatever the chapter is, Search Until You Find Your Grant, it was written 31 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, on Tico's birthday, by the way, it's pretty cool. So, anyways, and then eventually, he gets a hold of a guy named Ulysses S. Grant, mm. who's a drunk, who is getting into bar fights, okay, who he can't get a hold of, who doesn't call Lincoln back. And Lincoln is like, what the hell is the matter with this guy, right? So if we were to judge Grant on the basis of, well, he should be more proper, more eloquent, he should do this, he should do that, guess what? He called him back, whatever the timeline was, 90 days later, hey, the war is done, we won. You're kidding me. No, it's over with, you won. Are, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, we just went. Mm -hmm. So you weren't spending all these months getting trained? Right. No, no, everybody's ready, we just went to right. where we won. Right. Are you serious? Yes, so then what happens is, mm -hmm. you sit there, it's like bringing it back to the world that, you know, sports, uh, uh, the last dance, yeah. where it's like one day I'm in my, you know, Rod Dennis is going through one of his things, 
Jordan's telling the story. Yeah. You know the story. I know the story. And all of a sudden, we're like, he's missing. He's in Vegas. And I go and walk into a room. There's a bunch of naked. And then, you know, uh, uh, she's yeah. telling yeah. the story. She says, I'm in there naked. I'm like, Michael's in the place. He's like, what the hell is going on? We got you. Get your back. You know, got back to the game. And he says, I just walk out. And then all of a sudden, middle of the night, I'm like, who the hell is knocking on my door at midnight? Opens the door. It's Dennis. Mm -hmm. He comes and he says, hey, Mike, you got a cigar? He says, yeah. He said, we sit there. We have the cigar. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't say I'm sorry. <laughs> but from there on, he was locked in because Pippen was playing her to get the contracts yeah, yeah. back. What did Rodman do? He says, I've never seen Dennis play the way he did. Right? Wow. Sometimes the guys to go up against the enemies that are crazy enemies, they're not going to be the types of people that you want them to be. I know you want him to be the types of person that we want. So for, for us to go up and be able to have an audacity to go to North Korea, to go sit down with G, to go sit down with Putin, to go sit down with all these guys, mm -hmm. to go up against the establishment, to go up, up against the people that are using the mm -hmm. you know, American government as a way to make their money, how these guys came into politics before right. they were poor. Afterwards, they end up being richer. While this guy who went into politics was mm -hmm. rich. Right. After being president, he lost half his wealth. Right. And all this. So you're not going to find someone that's going to look that good. I used to think mm -hmm. an insurance agent's got to be somebody that's yeah. going to look like, first of all, I don't look like an insurance agent. If you would have seen me day one i had orange highlights because i would put peroxide in my hair and i would go to the beach and people were like why does this guy look like this and i'm coming in with a tank top Middle Eastern right. surfer. and then all of a sudden they're like but this freaking guy is going to go find an agency and sell more policies than anybody else mm -hmm. that's what the market needed so i can understand the point you're saying right. to be more presidential so that was a great uh great example the ulysses uh, s grant rolling up you know not the guy for the job in terms of how he's presenting himself but he gets results okay now i can't play too much of this this podcast but stephen a smith then goes on to say oh but it's a different time it's a different time and i'm like bro he's talking about war times what are you talking about <laughs> you're talking about the age of social media he's talking about the age of legit war uh, it's just very blind very blind to that whole thing. And I will say a lot of African Americans, a lot of Americans who are black have have that issue. They do not see it. They just think somebody should be presidential. They should look good. This, that. <sighs> it's so wild. You know, I had a friend, have a friend, like family to me. And this guy will do anything for me. I remember when I was young and I was in the streets I would walk in upset about something and he'd be like, just say who it is. Just say who it is. And I'd be like, I'd laugh. We'd laugh it off. And he'd just be like, he's like, but seriously, just say who it is. And I'd be like, okay, all right, all right. It's nobody. Leave, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. It's nothing. You know? And if, and if he found out who it was, he would, he would go. He didn't play around. But he would also, exactly like this guy was talking about Dennis Rodman, he'd also stay out all night and do things he wasn't supposed to do and bring wild women around me, you know, like just wild stuff constantly. You'd be in the car, you're trying to lay low. He has an open bottle. He's drinking it. He smoked. You'd be like, Oh my God, this guy's the world. His presentation was always terrible, but his heart and the results he would get were always incredible. Italian guy, love him to death, love him to death. He's like a brother to me. And we've been brothers a long time. But uh, he's like a wise guy. <laughs> he's a good fella. <laughs> kidding, of course. Kidding, of course. But but his presentation was always off. Always. But the things he would do, things he was willing to do, off the charts. And that's that's what I feel you have with Trump. It's, it's not always going to be the best, best presentation. You know, he might say something to a reporter. Now all of a sudden he's in the news. But also he's building this wall, you know, and also, you know, you don't know it because he was quiet about it. They just went and did it. But he flew over to this country, said, you guys are going to do this. Got on the phone with this person, said, listen, I'm not paying that. America's not paying that. I want to see you guys bring it up or we're not going to protect you. That's what's going on. And there's no articles. There's no news coverage of that because he's just doing it on the phone. Then he gets back in front of all the news people who are making these like hit pieces on him. That's what you have with Trump. Now, again, I, I, uh, I relate with Adam, first time ever. Adam says something. Now, Stephen A. Smith was talking earlier in this podcast about how when he went to negotiations for his new contract, he was operating based on the fact that he would walk around and everybody knew him and he was famous and he was operating on the emotion of things. 
Meanwhile, the company was operating on the stats and the data that they had. They wanted to pay him based on the data that they had and what they could see he was worth. He was operating on the emotion and the fact that everywhere he goes, people want to sign autographs. So he was operating on the emotion of what he was worth. And they butted heads and that ended their their um, their business relationship. Adam brings this up in regards to how you should look at a presidential candidate. Let's get into it. For Stephen A. I know your voice is it's amazing. <laughs> it's inflamed uh, vocal cords. <clears throat> but we're going to do this. I think you and I are very similar. Because everything you said about family and the way we voted, right there with you. 2016, 0% chance I was voting for Donald Trump. Zero. 2020, less than zero. I think most Americans were so done with Trump. Trump derangement syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm going to use your words against you. Okay. You said your definition of success, that meeting you had in uh, 2009. Yes, sir. You said you weren't fully a man yet. Mm -hmm. You said it was a data thing. Right. You were using emotion. Yes, sir. And they were using data. Right. PBD pointed out the data. Mm -hmm. You know, people like people will say, well, you know, there's two wars in Ukraine and Israel's going on and inflation and so that. Oh, how about the mean tweets? You missed them mean tweets by the, <laughs> by the orange dude yet? Right. Like, you know what? Kind of okay with those mean tweets. So it's policy versus personality. Believe me, mm -hmm. sitting next to PBD for four years, mm -hmm. we'll drip, we'll drip, we'll drip. And for the first time in my life, I'm planning on voting Republican. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'm totally understanding mm -hmm. where you're at with Trump. What's it going to take for you to use the data and not the emotion? Well, I don't believe I'm completely using the emotion. If you remember what I said. So I can't play too much. But again, he just kind of sticks to what he's saying. He's like, I'm not using emotion. And then he just brings up how it's a statemently position and you should act a certain way and all this stuff. And I'm just not buying it, quite honestly. I agree with uh, some stuff that Stephen A said. It's a long podcast. It's a two and a half hour podcast. It's on the uh, PBD podcast network. You can check that channel out. It's episode 385. And the timestamps that I was using was 49 minutes, then another one at an hour and 19 minutes, and then another one at an hour and 36 minutes, this last clip here. But basically, from 49 minutes right up until an hour and a half, they're just focusing on Trump and the election and everything like that. It's pretty great to listen to, but I'm not buying what he's saying, you know, and, and the reason I played that clip last is because I think there's a lot of black people, a lot of just left-leaning people who kind of fo focus on the emotion. A lot of people in general focus on the presentation and the emotion behind it, right? That's why Adam brought up mean tweets, a lot of people would be like, oh, but you see him on Twitter. Come on. You see him. You see him on Twitter. He's going to press the nuclear button just like he sends a tweet. And it's like, there's nothing to back that after seeing him as president. There's nothing at all that supports what you're saying. Not even slightly. But people cling to it. I, I don't know, man. I just wish people would see past that. Because another argument that they brought up with Gavin Newsom, PBD was talking about how Gavin Newsom versus DeSantis. DeSantis clearly, clearly is a better governor than Gavin Newsom. And when they debated, it was very, Gavin Newsom is a better debater. He just is. He's better at doing it. You know, he's just, he, he he's able to talk more. He's able to schmooze. He's able to push buttons more. He's just better at it. But all day, Ron DeSantis had more substance to what he was saying. And on top of that, he doesn't have piles of people in his streets everywhere like Gavin does. So clearly the better governor, but Gavin Newsom overall, you know, if you ask people, Gavin won the debate. This is and then and then also you look at people look at him and they say, oh man, he'd be a great president because he speaks nice and his hair slicked back and his teeth are veneered and he looks great and he's standing there and tall. You know, some people will say handsome. And it's like, that's the exact same situation that got Canada where they are today. They saw a nice young guy who was able to say the right things, didn't really have the, the social proof, the, 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 the proof that he was good at the, at the job, and they put him in office, and it's the worst thing that's ever happened. Everybody knows where Canada is at now. It's terrible. 
And, and that's what happens when you play around with this person sounds good and they look good. That's not what matters at all. It matters what they can actually do. And again, back to the defense of Trump. He's, he's older, may not look the best, may not have a full, full head of hair, whatever you want to say, or small hands, some people say, all this stuff that you can say about him. But when you look at how the economy did, you look at how the border was, you look at how he fought to make sure that America was always in the upper hand situation, no matter what he was going into, that's the thing that makes someone presidential, not the way they look. Because if you focus on the way they look, you're going to end up with Gavin Newsom or Kim Kardashian as your president. <laughs> and who wants to live in that world? Are you crazy? Again, go look at Justin Trudeau. You can find pictures of him with a beard. Looks great with a beard. Nice eyes, that guy. But look at the country. Look at the results. That's what matters. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, share. We're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers, and I'd really appreciate it. And other than that, I'm out.